Hey boys and girls, guys and gals, Jeff here with the Constance Camper. Yes, I'm out in my garage. It is like 17 degrees today, but what better day and situation than to go through what's in my vehicle. So what I'm gonna do today, this is gonna be a long video, so grab a cup of coffee or a snack because this is gonna be a long one, but this is one that I get the most requests for. That is what's in my truck, what's in my get home bag, and how do I use all this? So, this is a work in progress constantly. You're gonna find if you're someone that's just getting into being prepared and being self-reliant, that this is, this is constantly evolving and things are changing. Uh, what I find myself changing or upgrading to are either better products or products that are lighter or easier to use. So what I'll do is I'm gonna start with what I consider my vehicle stuff, okay? This is, the, the, the equipment and gear that I'm not gonna put in my get home bag or bug out bag. So first thing is this, that's what it is. It is an air pump. This thing is just awesome. So this thing plugs into your cigarette lighter and this allows you to pump up your tire now I've used this several times on tires, not just my own, but other people's tires. It does take a little bit. So if you're about 15 to 20 pounds low in your tire, this is probably gonna take about 12 to 15 minutes, but it's a great piece of gear to have in your vehicle. And you can blow up those swimming pools, the, the floating things when you go to the beach for the kids, footballs, basketballs, this thing comes in really handy. And this particular one comes with the kit that has the little tire uh, adapters and so on and so forth. So this thing's awesome. And there's plenty of different versions out there. I just found this one works well for me and I use that thing all the time. The next thing is a pair of jumper cables. Now these are heavy duty. If you don't know anything about jumper cables, there's a couple different kinds. There's what I would consider light duty uh, jumper cables. There's gonna be good for, you know, like a motorcycle, a four cylinder vehicle. I prefer the larger heavy gauge ones because those are gonna get into your, your V8 engines and the, the larger engines out there. Uh, and uh, these are longer. There's nothing more annoying than having a cheap pair of jumper cables that A, won't charge your car because they're not, they don't pull enough power and B, you've got to almost scrape the person's paint in order to get next to their car because the cables are too short. Get a good pair of jumper cables. The next thing I have, it's just a small shovel. Hey, this is one I think I bought like Ace Hardware. Uh, this gets you out of a lot of situations, especially in the snow. And it's a great little tool to have. And it comes in handy for other things, you know, like camping, uh, cleaning the coals out of, a, out of a, a campfire pit, you know, if you're there for a couple days. There's just a lot of different uses for this, but I keep a small shovel in there. The next thing is I have a thing of wrenches and I also have a socket set. I'll go ahead and open that so you can see what I'm talking about. And again, these were not expensive tools. Okay, these were, I wanna say this, this both of these together were like $79 for, for the pair. So keep that in your vehicle. And then always have a chair. And this is not an expensive one. Uh, th these are like 19 bucks on Amazon. Then in this, which is kind of like a plastic ammo carrier, I have inside of here, I have in this top thing, just a pencil, carpenter's pencil. And then inside of this, I have just a cloth towel, cotton towel. I have a pair of workers gloves or work gloves. Tire plug kit. Uh, if you've never, I mean, so you can see I've used that a, uh, a few times. If you never use one of these, uh, look it up. You can get them, you can find videos on YouTube how to do this. It is actually not as hard as what you think. And then being in the construction industry, I have plugged, uh, at least every tire I've ever owned at least twice. So these are a great thing uh, to keep in your uh, toolbox. I have a little bit warmer pair of gloves here. I have 
a toboggan. I have a pair of fingerless wool gloves. This is a, just a cheapo ice scraper. And I also, I'll show you up front, I have a larger one that I prefer, but a small little ice scraper. A, an entire roll of bank line, that's number six, 36 bank line. A roll of Gorilla Tape. A small funnel. This is one that people forget. And I'm telling you, if you're in a situation where you need gas and someone might have a gas can or they pick you up and are able to take you to a gas station, you buy the can of gas and you, it might not be the easiest thing to maybe it doesn't have a nozzle. <laughs> uh, you, you definitely want a funnel. It comes in really handy for a lot of things. Road flares. Yeah, there's those triangle ones that are battery operated. Just, I, I just, just get the, the real ones. You can also use these if you're in a situation where you're out in the cold and you need a fire right away. And let's say your bug out bag isn't quite complete and you don't have a fire kit or you just don't have the skill or knowledge to start a fire. This is a surefire way to start a fire. Uh, so there's three red flares in there. Have some of these uh, scrunchy cords that's just for tying things up with. Uh, I have some bungee cords. Those always come in handy. Some lock de-icer, which I always thought this was funny. People keep it in their vehicles, as do I. Uh, but if you're locked out of your truck, this doesn't do much good <laughs> if it's in the truck. Uh, zip ties, and I carry small ones, and then a larger pack of heavy duty uh, zip ties. And again, those come in handy a lot of times. Uh, last but not least, is hopefully you can see this right here my vehicle has a regular like 110 outlet and then also has a cigarette lighter type outlet uh, unfortunately the one i have you have to have it's a three-prong outlet so what i did is i just bought a, a two-prong adapter and then i have a just a usb charger there and then that's just an anchor battery. Now, you're probably asking, why do I why do I keep this like this? That's because when I start up my car, it will send a charge to that outlet. There's a button I push. You gotta watch because if you have a cigarette lighter, one, and you plug that in, sometimes that will run even if your vehicle's not running and it'll drain your battery. So make sure you, you check that. And I have an iPhone cord to that so if I do have to bug out I can just grab this whole thing and now I have a way to charge my, my phone. I have an alternative method of starting my vehicle and that is one of these and I call this an inverter battery I'm not sure if that's what you call it but this thing you do not have to charge up you can if you want but in colder weather they don't stay charged anyways so this thing here connects to your battery and it takes what battery juice is left in that battery uh, even if it's completely drained down there's always some juice and it'll actually pull that charge out of this and then redistribute the charge to the battery and start the vehicle awesome. and yes i have used this and it it boggles your mind i, I have no idea why or how this works I'm not an engineer, but whoever invented this is uh, a genius. And, and it, yes, it does work and it will fire off my truck if the battery's dead. So that's it for the back. And then obviously I have my bug out bag there and I will get into that contents on the inside where it's a little warmer. All right, hopefully this is bright enough so you can see it. So this is actually my back seat, um, but these are typically hung from the, the, the back side of the front seats but this just worked out better for me. This was actually a gift I bought for my dad, but it did not work with his Toyota Tacoma, Tacoma with the way he had the seat set up. So uh, I was gonna return and I thought, oh, that's not a bad thing and it wasn't real expensive. Just, it was a uh, Amazon buy. Uh, had This one came with uh, some really good reviews. So uh, I wanna say it was like $30, $40. But uh, it came with all of the black bags. You see, the only one it didn't come with is this one here. And so I have a bottle of water I have in here. I just usually keep trash. I have a flashlight. 
I have tape measure that's for work. I have one of those Mora knives that float in the water. And yes, that does float in the water. And then I have a, a heavier duty uh, a lock blade uh, pocket knife. This is a first aid kit. I've done a review of that. Go check that out. This is a legit one. It's really well put together. And so that's kind of my boo-boo kit. And then this is my trauma kit. So in there where, is where I keep, you know, like my clot uh, packets, Israeli bandage, tourniquet, nasal tube, et cetera, et cetera. So that is, that is a trauma kit. Uh, I don't need this one because I have one in my bug out bag, but if I had to leave my vehicle, I would grab this and that just, I can unsnap that and it just Velcros right off. Uh, the other thing is I have a pair of boots. I always have an extra pair of boots in my vehicle because in the summer, you know, sometimes I'm just wearing tennis shoes and I have, you know, I might need some boots and then I have a larger uh, snow scraper. All right, so let's get into the controversial bug out, inch bag, get home bag, whatever you want to call it. Now I'm going to preface this video with I know there's gonna be people commenting below. They have too many of this and not enough of that. I'm missing this and I'm missing that. And that's okay. Um, I am open to that because that just helps us all learn. And there may be some things in here that I am missing and I will add accordingly. But this is a bag that I've used for a long time and it just seems to work for me. And I go to this uh, a lot and I go to it a lot more than just for a bug out situation. So the, the bag itself is a Maxpedition. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Maxpedition gear. Uh, VanQuest makes some really good gear. Do you have to buy this? No, because this, this is kind of an expensive pack, but it is bulletproof. And I have banged this thing up. I have tossed it around and it just takes a beating. You don't have to buy something this expensive. Um, you can get away with something, you know, that's under a hundred bucks. Uh, these are probably two, 250. 225 somewhere around that area but it works well for me so in the in the bag we'll start here so if you're wondering why this is hanging out it's because i always forget that this has a, a pocket right here so i leave that out just to remind me oh yeah my knife's in there so i have a larger knife that's a, a k-bar uh, becker that's the BK7, so that gives me chopping capabilities and anything I need to do with a, a larger fixed blade. I also have in here a, a large saw. This is the Silky Big Boy, and I've actually used this in a situation where I was in my vehicle driving down this kind of a back road uh, path to a, a camp area, and there was actually a tree, a fallen tree in the middle of the road. And I tried to just pick it up and, you know, kind of manhandle it off to the side. And it didn't work. And I was able to cut it, you know, cut a section out of it wide enough to get my truck through. So I keep that in there. And I think that's all that's in that, that pouch there. And again, I just leave that out so I don't forget that it's in there. Uh, there's a little pocket here on the front and it's very small. I mean, I'm talking really small, about half half my hand. And I just keep a lighter in there. Nice big cons compression straps. And inside here, I'll start out with what's in the, the lid, if you will. Uh, so if I open that up, I have this is a fire kit. So in here, I have, have some stakes to set up a shelter, quick shelter. And then I have fatwood. Fatwood, I have trioxane fire starter. Any type of fire starter will do. I just prefer those. I have uh, some paracord, some matches, a ferro rod and some jute twine. This is great bird's nest material if you can't find anything out in the wild to make a, a bird's nest out of. And then obviously a, there's a big lighter in there. Then I have two containers, a smart water bottle, and then just that, I, th I think I got that. Uh, actually, I think I got that at a bar mitzvah, if I'm not mistaken. 
uh, and I, it just works. So uh, you can get a Nalgene. Yes, Nalgenes are probably better and they're more durable, but that's, that's what I have. And then a way to purify water, I have a Sawyer, it's the regular Sawyer uh, filter. I have the flush bag and the different uh, adapters, like to adapt it to a water bladder if you have to. Uh, I also have some uh, water tablets in there. I'm a firm believer in having three ways of filter water. So I can filter it with this water filter. I can boil it because I have a way to boil it. And then I also have tablets in case I have to disinfect the water that way. Keep in mind with, with any of these uh, filters, water filters, if it has a cartridge in it, if they freeze, they are rendered useless. So you don't want to have this as your only means of filtering water. You need at least two backups. I have some number 36 bank line, and then I have about 25 foot of paracord. And then this little pouch here, I simply have some four mil poly and a blue tarp. This is one of those grabber blankets. It's five by seven. It has a uh, foil back to it and the four mil poly. So if I'm in really, really cold weather, I can make a super shelter. If you don't know what a super shelter is, look it up. Uh, it's actually called the Moores, M-O-R-S, Kohansky. Do not ask me how to spell his last name, but it's called the Moores Kohansky super shelter you can have a small fire with that poly and that tarp and you can get if it's like 10 degrees outside you can get the inside of that tent 60 70 degrees easily uh, it's not a real stable shelter it's not going to hold up in you know blistering winds but if you need a down and dirty way to warm up quickly that is definitely the way to do it if you have access to firewood uh, Compactor trash bag, this has a lot of uses. You can use it as a, a ground cloth. You can collect wood with it. You can collect water with it. So I always keep that in there. Uh, another thing with the tarp, I forgot, is since it is uh, foil on the inside, if you're in your truck and you need to warm up, you can use that as another layer to help uh, keep your core body temperature regulated. Now going inside here, I have uh, a wool blanket. Now this is more of a moving blanket. I got this at Harbor Freight. I think these things are like 20 bucks. I have used this before. It does work. I mean, it's not as good as like a Pendleton or something of that nature, but it will do the trick. And again, you can use it to lay something down on. You can use it as kind of like a beach blanket, a makeshift be a beach blanket, which I have done before. And it just has a lot of different uses. I have a Shemog. Uh, this has a couple purposes. One, you can lay this down on the ground to spread out all your gear so you don't lose it in the, the dirt and the mud and the grass or weeds. Uh, you can also, I'm a firm believer, if you can keep your neck warm, you can keep your body uh, a lot e regulated a lot easier. So you can use this to wrap around your neck. You can use it as a, a, a head buff. You can wet it down with water and put it around your neck if it's hot out to keep, keep you cooled down. I have a pair of uh, waterproof gloves and then a pair of warmer gloves in here and a pair of work gloves. I have a small fixed blade knife that's just a belt knife that is a Druid uh, 265. Uh, it comes just like that minus the orange paracord and it's stainless steel. I recommend for a bug out bag or get home bag that you use stainless steel whenever possible. Uh, especially if you're not going to maintain it and check into it, you know, every four or five months to make sure that it's not rusting or, or putting a patina on it. I also have some of those cheapo ponchos and I think these are like 50 cents or something. So I keep, keep those in there. Uh, keep in mind, I do, we are a family of four. So I have some stuff in here that's redundant so that my family can use some of the things in here as well. Uh, for food, I have two of these. These things last forever. Uh, these are uh, emergency ration bars. Uh, They're 2,400 calories each. Yes, they taste and uh, they taste about as good as they look and sound right now. <laughs> 
So I did open one of these just to see what they taste like. It's not terrible, it's not like mulch, but it's definitely not a Snickers bar. Now, do you have to buy these? No, you don't have to. I like them just because I can throw them in there and they, they'll last forever. You could get away with a, a, a couple large sleeves of Snickers bars if you wanted to do that instead. I have a dry pouch. And so with this, the, uh, with, with this, what am I thinking here? With this, the dry bag I have around my jet boil, the containers here, I have about six liters of water I can carry. Uh, and that's not including the compactor bag. I don't know how many liters that is, but it's gotta be probably 15 liters. And I wouldn't carry all 15 liters in that, but I guess my point here is I have plenty of ways to carry and transport water. I have a wind-up radio, has a little battery in it. The solar part of this, on I've never found one that doesn't suck. You can put this out in direct sunlight for eight hours and you'll get about 20 minutes of radio, but it does have the hand crank and there, there's just something about being connected with the outside world via either the weather, weather station, emergency station, or radio station. So I keep one of those in there. I have a headlamp in there, and this is one of the reasons you want to check this bag every, I don't know, maybe twice, twice a year, because when I got this out, the batteries were dead in it, so I need to replace the batteries. I have some hand warmers. And then speaking of keeping warm, these you can buy all day long. I recommend getting the two person one, which is this one here, because these are kind of small. Uh, these are not real durable. So what I would do is use this. If I were in a really cold situation, I would use this with this SOL bivy, which is a little sturdier. And I could put the blanket with that and cover up with the uh, grabber uh, tarp. So between those things, I could really keep my body temperature regulated. This is my way of cooking food and boiling water. So I'm not a big fan of the jet boil for hiking. It's just not my cup of tea. I know a lot of people swear by it, but to me, it's just big, heavy, cumbersome, and there's just a lot of stuff going on there. And uh, you can put this on a fire directly, but you have to take the sleeve off but I found that this is an excellent thing to have in a get home bag or bug out bag. It's got the, the burner unit in there. I have a, a thing of uh, propane, a canister in there, and it has a cup with it as well. And these things do work really great and they boil water really, really fast. So I have that in there in a stuff sack. So again, I have another way to carry water. Uh, but mainly I put it in there because all that stuff kind of falls apart when you throw it in the bag. Uh, another poncho. I'm, I'm poncho heavy. So here's just kind of a personal hygiene kit. It has toilet paper, Kleenex, dude wipes. There's some extra of those just uh, garbage or bags that you get at the grocery store. Uh, toilet paper. And then I have a piece of aluminum foil in there as well. That's one of the lightest cooking sets you can use as, as aluminum foil and I have another roll of uh, toilet paper uh, I'm not a big fan of these I think these are a, a money grab but I think I got it in a stocking stuffer one year and I just threw it in there and then in here I have a first aid kit now this is what I'm calling a, a boo-boo kit so in here I have all your boo-boo stuff uh, I do have a small dressing bandage in there. I'm not gonna go through all the contents of this because I think that uh, first aid kits are very personal items and you need to put in there what you think you need. And do not forget if you are on medication, especially if it's like blood pressure or anything like that, make sure you have medications in there as well for at least four to five days. This whole thing is set up basically for a 72 hour emergency situation. Could I live out of this long term? Probably I would need a lot more food and water. But if you're just trying to survive, typically three days is what you need. Then in here is my bits and bobbits. And there's a lot of stuff in there. I have a separate video going into every single thing in this uh, bag or pouch. I'm not gonna do that here, but I'm gonna point out two things that are very, very important, especially 
in an urban situation. The first one is you need a way to open cans, aluminum cans, you know, soups, beans, uh, you know, uh, tuna. So that's a little military one. These do work really well. They're very sharp. Uh, you will wear out your hand using it. You know, a lot of people say, well, I don't need that. I can always take the can and rub it vigorously on a parking block or, or a concrete sidewalk. Yeah, but then you're gonna burn up all the calories that you're gonna consume with whatever's in that can. So I wanna just be able to open the can. The other thing, and this is one I don't see a lot of, this is called a Silcock key. What this is, is this allows you to turn on water on any hose bib on a commercial building. If you go to a commercial building, you're gonna notice hose bibs outside, you know, like you hook your hose onto, but they don't have knobs like they do on your house. And they do that for a reason, because they don't want anyone in just jump it on there and turn their water on. So this allows you to get into that part that is recessed. You can't dig it with pliers or needle nose either. You have to have a key like this. And this can also turn on and turn off gas uh, shutoffs as well. Uh, this is something, this and the can opener, I'm telling you, are golden, especially if you're in an urban situation. And I think that should about do it for everything that is in this kit. And uh, we'll go ahead and wrap this up. Now to wrap this up, there are, I believe, four things I wanna, I wanna talk about. Number one is one that I'm not going to show on my channel. Uh, for those of you that are into being prepared and emergency awareness and all that, you're, you probably already know what that is. I'm not gonna show those things, but yes, I do have those available and I do carry those. So that's, that's the first one. The next one is the skills and knowledge to use this stuff. You know, it's, it's not enough to just go out and put a bag like this together. Now, I will say, if you've never had anything like this, having a bag with all the gear in it and zero knowledge is still better than having no kit at all because I'm, I'm gonna assume that you can figure out how to open a road flare to start a fire or a Bic lighter or how to string up a tarp. I'm just gonna assume that, that you're at least able to do that. But you're gonna be a lot better off if you take and understand the skills and knowledge that, that, that you need in order to use this, this bag. The other thing is habits. Uh, there are people that smoke, they chew, they vape. Uh, they've got to have, you know, a bar of chocolate every single day. You have to be able to either A, get rid of those, or B, incorporate that into this bag because that is part of your daily life. If there's something you do in your daily life, like medications, that needs to be represented in here, like I said, for at least four to five days. Uh, and then last, but certainly not least, is health. I see a lot of guys that do these bug out bags and they've got a thousand rounds of 5.56 five, in the bag. They've got three firearms, a rifle, you know, shotgun. They've got enough food for 10 days to feed an entire army. The thing's massive and it's about 60 pounds. And then the guy's 5'10 and weighs 300 pounds. He can't even get the waist belt on the backpack his belly's hanging over it. If you think you're gonna take this bag and march up a hill with it, running away from whatever zombie that's attacking you, and you're out of shape, that's not gonna happen. Uh, and, and how I know this is I've actually taken this out and I've just walked two miles in my neighborhood and it's daunting, it, it is a task. Uh, this thing all in weighs about 30 pounds. Now it's kind of heavy because I do have, it's tool heavy, and I also have, you know, those two big food bars in there. But keep in mind, if I want to stop and get water before I take off, that's going to even add to it. And then I'm in, into the 40 pound range. So when I go hiking, my base weight of my backpack is about 13 and a half pounds for a winter loadout. Uh, that's really light. And then with food and water, I end up about 20 to 22 pounds. That is a chore to just hike eight to 10 miles. So. You have to be in shape in order to pull this off. And keep in mind, you're gonna be under extreme duress. You're gonna be stressed out with the fact that, hey, I gotta take care of my wife or I gotta take care of my wife and my kids. Now, one thing that you can do 
is educate your family on what this is. Throw in a couple of those cheap, you know, the little stringy backpacks they give away at school functions. Throw a couple of those in there. That way you can give them some of the weight as well. So that, that's, that's gonna help out. You have to be in shape. This is a, this is a mindset. This, is a, this isn't just put together a bag and throw some wrenches in your truck. This is a mindset of being prepared for worst case scenario. Now, will I ever have to use this? Probably not. Will you ever have to use it? I certainly hope not. But it's there if you need it. And again, there's a lot of things in there that I, I use on a daily basis. You know, for instance, like the air compressor. Dude, you're, you're like the soccer dad hero. When the soccer ball's dead and there's no more left and you're like, hey, I've got an air pump. Boom, there you go. So those are some of the most important ingredients which are not in the bag. The first one, which I won't talk about. The second one, get training, gain knowledge, uh, acknowledge your habits. And if you have those, try and get rid of them or at least, you know, throw your carton of cigarettes in there if you're gonna need them. Uh, and also make sure that you're in shape you know, being healthy. That is that is a key component to this because I hate to say it, all, all the beer belly dudes with all the ammo and the 80 pound pack, <laughs> you're gonna be blowing by them and they'll probably be passed out so you can just grab all their stuff and run with it. Anyways, so hopefully this is helpful. This is Jeff with the Common Sense Camper, camping out.